They're trying to make it look like, I mean, I've seen it. They have vaqueros riding their horses in their, in their outfits with a six-shooter on in the 21st century. Uh, they're not fighting Indians in the 21st century. Not, they're not fighting Yaquis on the streets of, uh, you know, of, 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 of you know, you know, of, uh, Acapulco. But it, they do it because we did it in the United States in the 30s and 40s. Their, their storylines are comparable to what we were doing. They are behind us in a lot of areas. Technology, they're ahead a little bit. One of the things um, they were, they really wanted to emphasize is this was 100% fiction. Yeah. This does not relate. Because they don't want to get involved with no. the Mexican Mafia. <laughs> Which, I couldn't blame them for that. Yeah. All right, so 100% fiction. Also, she involuntarily gets involved into drug trafficking. Yeah. And, you know, and, but she, and I love it that, uh, you know, she is the, she, the Democrats will love this story. She right. is the true victim. She's a drug trafficker, the queen of the drug trafficker, and she's a cold-blooded killer, but she's actually the victim. Mm -hmm. Well, and, they did create a sympathetic character. Oh, well, yeah. Well, I mean, well, they, they, she gets raped a lot, so, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so sympathetically as she blows a guy. You know, only in a only in a television or movie can you shoot a guy in the head with a forty-five caliber pistol, and he gets up complaining about. Yeah, I was I was kind of wondering about that one because I mean, but blowing his head. Off. I mean, he she literally was like, yeah, boom, like he boom. was on top of her, and she literally had the gun here, shot him, and was like, yeah. hmm. And you can also see how the show was shot in bald eye levels because let's put it this way, she didn't have any underwear on when she gets up to run away. Um, and conveniently finds a pair of panties that are just her size, and she is not a really small woman, but one pair on a line that happened to fit her so that she can continue running with nothing on. So, yeah. Well, you know, that's what they call TV. That, you know, right? Yeah, coincidence, you know, coincidence. Coincidence, coincidence. When she did a nice job off the top of a building on her. Well, actually, yeah, she did. And what, one of the things is they said that they wanted to make it authentic, so if they were filming in Spain, they had mainly Spaniards yeah. know, on the set. Or if they're in Mexico, it's Mexicans or... Yeah, and Colombia and Colombians. They use because the accents are a little bit different. Mm -hmm. I mean, the way they speak, the way they're, the, you know, um, there's a difference between España arrogance and Mexican arrogance. Mm -hmm. And a difference between Colombia. Colombia is more um, Indian than it would be in Mexico, and mm -hmm. definitely not in Spain. You can see the arrogance of the España accent. So, mm -hmm. I mean, these guys were strutting like peacocks. Yeah. Yeah, and part of it is you may not think there is, but there is a difference. So they wanted it to be authentic, which it, it comes through. Castilians tend to be also lighter haired, <laughs> fairer skin, and so in a lot of cases, blue eyes. Mm -hmm. Whereas the uh, people from Mexico tend to be shorter, darker haired, and more like mestizo looking. So. Mm -hmm. You know, she's sort of a combination of many, I mean, uh, you know, of a couple of different, because, I mean, we'll put it this way, the, uh, she would sometimes get so wrapped up in what she would do, she'd go into a Southern California girl's accent, and then she'd get excited, <laughs> really excited, and then speak in Spanish and have to have somebody translate for her. <laughs> she'd get wound up about what she's doing, and it would slip into Spanish, and then the gentleman from Telemundo would have to translate the words for her. So you can tell which is her primary language. Yeah. So, yeah. Because, it, like I said, she, when she uh, because she's very calm and cool, which is the character she plays also. But she's not that big. It's a little tiny thing. She, like I said, she's standing behind us. You know, they said they list her at 5'3", and I have her listed at 5'2". But if I list her at 5'5", five, five, I have her at 5'2". I think the 5'3 is with the big heels she wears. Which she really isn't comfortable in because she takes them off a lot. Well, it's funny. Well, because the first thing I'm thinking, she comes out of the house. She has a big purse. It looks like Louis Vuitton. Um, yeah. Right? Because drug traffickers. Why? She has these gorgeous heels, but yeah. she's got to take the heels. She doesn't take a pair of flats. She takes the gorgeous heels. She's carrying yeah. them in her hand the whole time. Yeah, because mm -hmm. the, the, she she didn't want to lose them because she still mm -hmm. had them. You're like we're talking like this is a half year after she loved the show those was shoes. Done. She loved the shoes. So she two pairs of perk, but. Um, uh, she's telling us, like we get back to, she's been working, she said she started out nine years old and she was, and did all of these great things and was upset that people didn't get back to her about putting her in feature films. 
Mm. And, you know, one of the things I thought was kind of funny was Sarah Waxman, who's the, I think she's the publisher for TheRap.com. She asked her, because she started at nine years old, she's like, and how old were you when you were upset that you didn't, weren't getting those roles? And she kind of skirted around it for like ten minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I checked the IMDb, she was six. It was, it was nine when she was upset about She was a six-year-old. I know. And then she by nine, she was, you know, Daddy, they're not hiring me for feature films. I know. So it's she like, got missed. Okay, Sharon's like, what were you? She started at nine and she says, what were you, 11? You know? Yeah. <laughs> she was actually nine. That's why they got that. That's funny about the eleven, but um, um, she did. She did a little, a little bit here, a little bit there. She's getting up and, and to the more roles because she did point out that it is a, it is a, it is a male-dominated society in Mexico. They do not like strong women, and this yeah. character is a strong woman. Yeah. So. Uh, She's a very strong woman. Yeah. So, but. Uh, you know, she, she started catching her own in 1990, which is actually 21 years ago. We still met. She was 16, 17 years old when she finally got those things, you know, those, you know became the star that she wanted to when she was actually six. I was disappointed because for two years she waited to be made a star. Yeah. Which is actually, I mean, it's really kind of funny because it's like, you, you know, you've heard the saying, what takes 20 years to make an overnight success? Yeah. Well, it's because she grew up in the industry and she saw her father who, and her mother and they were very successful in the industry. So, you know, it's like, yeah. she was ready right then. Yeah, but the, it was, she was a girl. If she had been a boy like, um, you know, uh, Tony Aguilar Jr. or, uh, you know, or, or the gentleman, what is it, uh, the guy, oh, actually I worked with the gentleman who played the... Uh, the, he played the, one of the main people in um, uh, what is it from Russia with Love. Pedro Armendariz Jr. I worked with Pedro Armendariz Jr. and Senior. Junior was helped by Senior, mm -hmm. uh, and um, that's how it works in the business. The males can help the males, but they have really no pull over with the females. Mm -hmm. So she basically, Daddy, probably Daddy, they're not making a movie offers. offers. Mm -hmm. Well, she had to get a lot. She had to get older and get to the point where she looked good wearing lingerie. But you could, I mean, you could see a little girl like telling her Daddy, but Daddy, I want this. I know. Right? Yeah. You know, well, you've already done this. Just, but you know, you're just a little girl. So it dribbled mm -hmm. out until 1990, and in 1990. She started, you know, boom, 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 boom. I mean, she's been busy a little thing. She was good. And actually, she's an actress to watch. I mean, yeah. she may be on Telemundo, but I mean. Well, if she does, uh, she's, she, she, you know, she's been on Weeds. Yep. And, she, and she's in a show with, a uh, movie with Eva Longoria. Yeah. And uh, she's in, all, she's also in another movie, was it called K9, K17, K something or other. Mm -hmm. uh, she's basically, she is, for all practical purpose, the breakout Latino star, which really kind of pissed them off in Mexico. It's a woman that's a breakout star. I know. You know it's going to. Well, because uh, Americans admire athletic women in uh, action roles. They really do. Yeah. And uh, she can she can do the part. She says she enjoys doing her stunts. She really does. I mean, you can tell by the athletic build that this woman works out so she can actually kick butt. Oh, yeah. And she's doing it herself. Yeah. And nobody else but them. No, and I, well, well I, what she said was, you know how, I, well, that's basically it's a big thing, all the actors know this, that when they ask you if you could do something, oh yeah, I can do it, I mean, I told Well, you know, that was funny, because you mentioned that before, and she says it right on stage, oh yeah, I can do that. Yeah, and then, you know, like, you know, how do you make this thing what work? What am I doing? She never drove a boat, and they're all, how do I make it work? They give her instructions. Then, like I said, as she's being chased and doing all the stunt driving, what am I doing? <laughs> it's like driving a car, right? No, it's not like driving a car. It's just what she said. She had the life of two people behind her in her hands, and she really didn't know what she would do. She said, am I afraid a lot? Yeah. <laughs> because she, she's an actress. She learns from her father and her mother, uh, and she's also got... Actually, her sister is a news anchor for well, Univision, which is funny. Well, actually, one of the things that she says is, I only do those roles that scare me and that are challenging. Yeah. Which means that she wants to do something that uh, if it scares her, not necessarily scares her by playing a character, but by the things she has to do in it. Well, in another movie she comes up where she's playing, she's in downtown LA, she's playing a transsexual. A transsexual in a transsexual wing of the LA jail. So, yeah, which is, that's a real scary thing being, you know, kids are working in the LA jail. 
And, and, and it's just, um, I do remember, I, I an example, I worked on a thing where mm -hmm. the, um, where I was playing an MP and there was a whole bunch of guys from Korea uh, that basically were the bad, they were bad soldiers, they were put in a stockade and none of the actors wanted to be in a stockade because they were putting real bad guys from the military in a stockade and they, you know, they sat there and look at the you know, pretty boys. Yeah, the same when they say pretty boy, that always scared the hell out of them. I mean, I, I saw big name actors, you know, uh, no. You know, so, and she's, that's what I mean, it's a scary role for her to be locked up in a facilities where you know they don't like transsexuals or things yeah, like that. Yeah, that, that's, kind of, that's a scary role. Yeah, but uh, the, like I said, production-wise, it's, it's the, it actually, the best, we saw Gla um, mm -hmm. uh, Spartacus uh, Arena of Gods, which had really good production, but a lot of it is green screen. This is all just straight good production, mm -hmm. totally. Yeah, by uh, the sound work. Was yeah, they said ninety-five percent on location. That's yeah, a lot. A lot did what they didn't do with Spartacus, which was to get out and do it, mm -hmm. and it could have just as easily been studio with no problem. Mm -hmm. No one would have noticed the difference if you're doing it. Okay, their own Telemundo's owned by Universal. If they'd have went to the Universal set, no one would have known the difference because that's how good you're supposed to be. But they took the hard route, which to go out on the streets and shoot things because if you look, if, if you watch the television, okay, it's going to be on, um, they're talking about DVDing it, but it's also going to be on, it's going to be on the cable channels. Mm -hmm. And uh, watch the faces of a lot of the people when they see the actors. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, go by? They're getting, you know, like, what's that? You also see the eyes of the guys uh, when, you know, they're staring at the, you know the you know her as she goes by, you know you know the you know that you don't get from actors that you get from people on the street. That's authentic. Authentic, but um, so in our country we can't actually do that because you have to have signed releases from everybody. There they don't have to have signed releases; they just do it. Mm -hmm. So, but um, it is it is rich, beautiful color with a single camera high end. How they you know okay. Um, the Latins love color. Yeah. I mean, why, why else do you think turquoise yeah, shoes, okay. yeah. bright red? Right. And Mr. Romano, if you want to see how you do one camera right, go look at, uh, you know, the Rana del Sor. I could have done it right with the camera they were using, too. But it is, I hate it, they're using a zoom lens. You can tell it's a zoom lens because it's out of focus uh, part of the time because they're in their... They're doing moving shots, and it basically throws things out of focus in the moving shots because they get in the cab, and I know the thing is basically mounted on the side of the cab, so it's gone like that. But um, uh, I come from a world of low-budget productions. We would never have used a zoom lens. We used two cameras. One camera could be out, and the other camera on a wider shot. It also cuts cost. Which they don't understand a lot. They think a one camera cuts the cost. No, because you basically are doing an awful lot of intercutting with the one camera. Because most of okay, fifty percent of what you're shooting is totally worthless because of the, of the blur. So the two, that's why they developed two cameras. That's why Desi Arnaz developed the three camera technique because then you could have three different shots. You're going mm mm mm. You don't have to re continually reshoot it. You just should use it from a different angle. You do it from a different angle. You just pick, okay, I pick camera two. Okay, I want camera, give me camera three, cut camera one, camera, give me camera mm -hmm. two again, I want camera one, give me camera two again, give me camera three. That's how it's done when you're doing, a, you know, something, you know, but, um, you know, but it is, it, it, a lot of countries, uh, a lot of countries, uh, India, for instance, uses multi-cameras like we do, but they don't record live sound. Mm -hmm. I, I'm getting an idea. I mean, the sound quality was very good too, considering there's not a lot of places they could have put a microphone on. Uh, yeah, that's absolutely true. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of places for mics to go. Mm -hmm. So it meant they were doing very good sound recording with the people that were doing the work. And I didn't see a lot of dubbing being done. It may have been being done, but if they did it, they were really good. They, if they did, they were really good. So, because I saw no mic shadow, I saw no boom shadows. Mm -mm. And since a lot of what they do is action, you can't have a guy running around with a boom, so. <laughs> yeah, so you're going to go like this when they're walking. 
So we're looking possibly they had a shotgun mic parked, uh, they had individual, they were individually marked somehow. The men were less simple, but not for her. Well, wasn't she wasn't wearing a whole lot. Wearing a whole lot. When she was wearing a lot, she wasn't wearing a whole lot. Which is now, why maybe there's posts. a microphone that you can make into an earring, although I don't think she No, was because earring. then it gets, uh, basically the problem is that when you're wearing microphones and running, you get Oh, that's true. So, yeah, I think it was a lot of good, very sound max matching up with what they did with shows uh, that we're talking about. Part of this was done to show the people in that audience that they were just as capable as the product people in that audience were. Mm -hmm. But I've always, I've always known they were. I've worked with Latin uh, in a business. I mean, God, I worked on. I clicked on some really bad American movies. I heard, in there, so. I heard some of the people in the audience. He said, "Yeah, we've seen every episode." Yeah, every episode. I, I watch some of the times I watch this stuff. I mean, I can tell you that the sub, that the subtitles don't match up with the dialogue in a lot of cases. You know? Yeah. Well, let's put it this way: there was a lot of naughty four-letter words in the dialogue that were not in the. Um, <laughs> 